Throughout human history, countless people have met their end in the most disturbing manners possible. Some examples, however, stand out, likely due to the cruelty or agonizing manner of their demise. In today's video, we will look at three of the more disturbing cases of how one might shuffle off this mortal coil. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Trust Tested channel. After that, leave us a comment and let us know what other brutal deaths you would like to hear about. First on the list will be the brutal execution of Robert Francois Damien. This would-be assassin attempted to kill King Louis XV of France in 1757, and for this, he was tortured and executed as if he had succeeded. Just why Robert attempted to kill the King of France is unknown, yet his death remains one of the more gruesome examples of torture and execution. Robert's life prior to his botched assassination attempt appeared perfectly ordinary. He had spent much of his life working as a domestic servant, moving from job to job and establishing a family. During the 1740s, Robert moved from job to job more frequently, developing erratic behaviors and eventually stealing from his employers. At a time estranged from his family, he was noted for speaking to himself at night, bleeding himself to remove bad blood and drinking heavily. On the 5th of January, 1757, as the king was making his way to his coach at the Versailles Palace, Robert made his move. He went through the king's guards and collided into the king. At this point, Robert stabbed King Louis with a small pocket knife before making his escape. Initially, the king believed that he had been merely punched. It was only when he went to touch the site of the impact that he felt and saw blood. Louis suffered a shallow wound between his ribs, but was otherwise unharmed. Robert didn't stab the king multiple times, and thanks to the king's thick winter clothing, he remained largely unharmed. Robert was soon apprehended and taken away to be tortured. It was thought that Robert might be part of a larger conspiracy to assassinate the king, but no such definitive motive was established, and no other members of a conspiracy were found. The evidence that did exist focused largely on his work as a domestic servant for a Jesuit college. During his 50 interrogations, he stated he had planned to kill the king some three years prior, and that his inspiration for the attempted assassination was from everyone around him, not a particular source. No consideration was paid to his mental state prior to the attack, and much emphasis was placed on the possibility of some greater political conspiracy. Even though the attack didn't kill the king, Robert was condemned as if he had. His execution was to be a grand show of the consequences of striking against the divinely appointed monarch. On the 2nd of March, 1757, he was brought before the crowds to be executed. Before his death, Robert's flesh was ripped from his body. Specially made pincers were used to tear the flesh from his arms, chest, thighs, and calves. Once the flesh had been removed, a mixture of molten lead, boiling oil, and melted wax was poured onto his skin. It was reported that Robert cried out in a manner that greatly disturbed those who were present. The executioner struggled to remove the flesh, needing to make multiple twisting wrens to rip away the desired amount. The next step was to deal with the hand that dared to strike the king. It was burned with sulfur, but the flame used were of a low heat, meaning only the top layers of skin were burned away. Finally, ropes were tied to Robert's arms and legs and he was to be pulled apart by four horses in different directions in what is termed as quartering. However, the attempt was botched. The horses pulling were not able to pull him apart, and after 15 minutes, two more horses were added. Still, the desired outcome was not achieved. It was then decided that Robert's thighs were to be cut to ease the process. It was only when the flesh had been cut to the bone that Robert's limbs came away. When the priests went to attend to Robert, he was declared dead. Yet some accounts insist that he was still alive even when his broken body was tossed into the fire to be burned to ash. Robert's execution was brutal, his body desecrated and destroyed for all to see. It is a disturbing example of the punishments inflicted against those who committed treason, regicide, or the stabbing of a king. Our next example is that of Balthazar Gerard the man who assassinated William the Silent. To kill a member of royalty was seen as an affront to God, as such people were believed to rule through divine right. Such acts of regicide would invite the most severe of punishments. So why did Gerard set out to kill William the Silent? 
In the late 1500s, William the Silent was a leading proponent of the Protestant Reformation and rebelled against Spanish control in the Netherlands. William sought to increase the power held by the Dutch nobility and to put an end to the persecution of Protestants by the Catholic Spanish rulers. In 1581, the provinces of the Netherlands declared independence from Spanish rule. That same year, the King of Spain issued a significant bounty for the head of William the Silent, and he was declared a traitor to the Catholic faith. Gerard set about attempting to claim the bounty. He first joined the Luxembourgian army in hopes of getting close to William, though such a meeting never materialized. It would not be until 1584 that Gerard re-attempted his plan in earnest. After failing to secure funding from a Spanish backer, he instead presented himself to William. He lied, claiming he was the son of a martyred Protestant from France, fallen on hard times, receiving a sum of money as a donation. Instead of buying the clothing he claimed he needed, Gerard bought a pair of flintlock pistols. On the 10th of July, Gerard returned to the Prinzenhof Palace, waiting for William in the shadows. As William ascended the stairs, Gerard ambushed and fired two shots into the prince's chest. As William lay dying, Gerard attempted to make his escape. He had planned to jump into the moat and swim to a waiting horse. However, he stumbled and he was caught by the palace guards. As he was dragged away under a rain of fists and sword hilts battering him, he professed his loyalty to the King of Spain. William the Silent bears the ill title of the first head of state assassinated with a firearm. When Gerard was brought before the court for his crime, he expressed no regret or remorse for the killing. In fact, he compared himself to David, with the prince being Goliath. His trial was short, and he was quickly sentenced to death, but not before a prolonged period of torture. The magistrates issued a number of punishments to be carried out before Gerard's heart was to be ripped and thrown in his face. Gerard was first hung on a pole where he received lashing after lashing. He was then taken down and had his wounds smeared with honey. A goat was brought in and encouraged to lick these honey-smeared wounds. Goats have an extremely coarse tongue capable of ripping away flesh, but the goat refused to play its part. Gerard's hands were then forced into a vat of boiling oil. At night time, Gerard had his hands and feet bound together in a painful stress position, tied into a ball, making sleep incredibly difficult. Gerard was made to wear shoes made of uncured dog, leader that were far too small for his feet. His feet were then held to a fire, resulting in the leader contracting and crushing his feet. Once the crumpled shoes were removed from his crumpled feet, so too was the skin that had melted and fused into the leather. Boiling bacon fat was poured over Gerard, scorching his flesh. With his battered, burned and shredded body in tatters, he was made to wear clothing doused in alcohol. After three days and nights of excruciating torture, Gerard was finally executed. First, his right hand was burned off with hot iron, and flesh was torn from his body in six places. Gerard was then quartered and disemboweled, all while clinging on to life. Finally, as decreed in his sentence, Gerard's heart was ripped from his chest and thrown into his face. The final step was to remove his head, which was later displayed on a pike at the site of the assassination. His arms and legs were then put on four gutters of the city. The King of Spain provided the bounty to Gerard's parents, along with lands and patronage. In light of Gerard being unable to claim it, William's death did little to stop the cause for Dutch independence or Protestant Reformation. His family continued as the monarchy for the Netherlands, and so did the Dutch revolt continue well into the 1600s. As for Gerard, he is remembered less for his actions and more for the grisly end he met as a result. Finally, we have the Byford Dolphin accident. On the 5th of November 1983, five saturation divers working on the Byford Dolphin met a truly disturbing end. A catastrophic, explosive decompression killed five and injured one. To understand it better, it is helpful to start with an explanation of saturation diving. When one dives at extreme depths, the body experiences many atmospheres of pressure. This pressure compresses the gases in the body, leading to the absorption of nitrogen into the blood. If a diver returns to the surface too quickly, and as the pressure decreases, there is not enough time for the nitrogen to safely leave the body. When this rapid ascent happens, the absorbed nitrogen forms bubbles, leading to decompression sickness, commonly known as the bends, 
This condition can cause severe pain, dizziness, or even a stroke. The divers were working at the deepest, darkest depths of 300 meters, repairing or fitting oil pipelines. Saturation diving was employed, where divers complete the dive and return to the surface in a pressurized diving bell, connecting to a pressurized chamber matching the dive pressure. Where saturation divers spend their off time in a diving chamber, it can extend for as much as 28 days at a time. The body can only absorb a limited amount of nitrogen, meaning the time required for decompression won't increase exponentially. Once their designated time is completed, divers can then take the necessary time to safely decompress. Living in such a saturation diving chamber involves carefully maintaining pressure, because a sudden change can be catastrophic. This circumstance was tragically exemplified in the case of the men aboard the Biford Dolphin. The chamber, located on the drilling rig in the Frigg gas field of Norway, housed Edwin Arthur Coward, Roy Peter Lucas, Bon Java Bergner, and Trusa Helvig. Dive tenders William Cramond and Martin Saunders manned the diving bell. On the 5th of November, 1983, Cramond connected the diving bell to the chambers and safely returned two divers into chamber one. The other two divers were waiting in chamber two. However, the diving bell was detached without the chambers being sealed, resulting in immediate explosive decompression. The diving bell was blasted away with a huge change in pressure. Cramond was fatally injured and Saunders survived with critical injuries. The four divers were instantly killed as the change in pressure boiled the nitrogen instantly, thankfully meaning the divers did not feel anything. Trusa, in the process of sealing the chamber, was pulled out of the hatch which was opened around two feet in diameter. His body was pulled through this, with body parts found strewn all over the deck of the rig. The initial report blamed human error, asserting that it was the fault of the dive tenders for not following correct procedures. Little mention was made that the divers and tenders had been working for almost 13 hours straight, with dives that regularly exceeded the maximum amount. Crucially, the setup of the diving bell and chambers was inherently dangerous. In 2006, a report confirmed faulty equipment was to blame, allowing the families of the divers to successfully sue the Norwegian government. This case highlights the dangers of working in extreme environments and emphasizes how vital proper safety equipment is for those putting their lives on the line. From brutal executions to underwater tragedies, these stories serve as a stark reminder of the unforgiving nature of the past. Join us next time for more intriguing narratives. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our dark journey through history. Thanks for watching.